Hello and welcome to NetSuite's short video that covers NetSuite's multi-company capabilities, which truly differentiates from other ERP solutions on the marketplace. NetSuite's platform was natively designed for consolidated reporting, and its architecture was built on a single unified platform to enable you with real-time drill-down capabilities. With this design, you'll always have a 360-degree view into all of your entities, business units, customers, and vendors, resulting in unmatched global visibility. Today, we're going to take a look at our subsidiary navigator, which gives us a visual illustration of our hierarchy structure. I have a parent, child, and grandchild entities within my hierarchy structure. Within NetSuite, you have the ability to manage that parent-child relationship throughout the application. This portlet lets me quickly filter and take a pulse onto an individual entity. As you can see, all of my sales and receivables are reflective of Entity B. All my portlets and my dashboards updated in real time. As I click on the UK entity, all that information is now updated into the base currency of the British pounds for the United Kingdom. Translation occurs behind the scenes as I toggle from one entity to the next, and the system updates in real time to the base currency of that parent entity. Now we're back to USD, now looking at our parent entity. So for today's use case, we're going to get a better understanding of just how quickly we're able to spin up our new UK entity. There's a few basic pieces of information that you need to go ahead and enter to create a new business unit or EIN. Here we have our name that we're defining, where that fits within our subsidiary structure. We're gonna identify our country that correlates to our tax nexus. And we're gonna indicate our fiscal calendar year end, as well as the base currency of this specific entity. Once that's been set up, I can go ahead and import my historical trial balances. And with that, I'll be able to run a full consolidated financial statement, instantly being able to look and include my newest entity. So whether you're expanding abroad, undergoing a new acquisition, or spinning up a new entity, you can continue to use your existing chart of account structure and GL segments to streamline reporting and unify global operations. So keep in mind, as you continue to grow and expand, you can rest assured that NetSuite will be able to support you every step of the way. Now that we've gone ahead and we have both of those entities set up, let's go ahead and take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of our P&L. It's easy and intuitive to go ahead and execute and run an income statement. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out by a specific dimension or segment within my chart of accounts. We'll go ahead and take a look at our subsidiary hierarchy so I can get that side-by-side -side comparison of a P&L perspective across my entities. If I wanted to go ahead and take a look at an individual entity, I can go ahead and now run this income statement based on the information in the UK. Everything will be translated behind the scenes to reflect the British pound. And again, with any report in NetSuite, I have the flexibility to go ahead and drill down into the underlying details. So within a couple clicks, I'm able to go ahead and look at the source transaction for the advertising details that were related on my income statement. So I can quickly find additional information within the system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how NetSuite uses different exchange rate tables to automate and manage foreign currencies. There's two tables that I wanna highlight for today. Our first is our currency exchange rate. So the system provides an automated feed for multiple providers. These automatic feeds will update this table, which is used to default these exchange rates onto each transaction to eliminate the manual effort of having to look up each rate on a daily basis and enter it into the system. The second is our consolidated exchange rate table, which is used at month end. NetSuite will automatically calculate my consolidated exchange rates, which are used in my consolidated financials. This is all based on the transactions entered throughout the month. This is a step that will be completed during my period close checklist. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it entails to close out your books. We'll start by taking a look at that checklist. And this is simply a guided series of steps that NetSuite's advising to help you efficiently close out your books. So this certainly doesn't include everything, but it does include those key steps that allow you to lock down and finalize your transaction entries for the month so you can prepare your financials. There's three key areas that I want to focus on. The first is locking down your GL. We'll take a look at locking down our AP. Within NetSuite, you have the flexibility to lock your periods down by company. So if I want to lock everything except my US2, which requires a few more adjusting entries, I can do that. The second thing I want to take a look at is revaluating our open foreign currency balances. 
But before we jump into that step, let's take a look at some information behind the scenes. Here's the bill that we just referenced when we drilled down from our income statement. This is our open AP vendor bill. You can see this transaction has been entered in euros. Keep in mind, base currency for the United Kingdom is British pounds. The system will have to take a look at our currency exchange rate table since this is an open AP bill. I'm going to need to revalue this transaction based on the spot rate from the last day of the month. Going back to my period close process, I can now go ahead that I have a better understanding of what's happening behind the scenes and revaluate my open foreign currencies. The system's automatically going to create a revaluation transaction to account for my unrealized gain losses, which will automatically reverse the first day of the following month. This is the revaluation entry that was created with a single click of a button from the system. So what does this mean in terms of reporting? If I go back to my income statement and I scroll down, we can see that I have my unrealized gain loss. Again, everything's in real time and there's no batch GL, so I'll have real time information at my fingertips. I can drill down into the underlying details and see that this transaction was created from our period close checklist that we just processed. The last step I wanna take a look at is the elimination of inner companies. Let's go ahead and take a look at a seated example for a journal entry that we have here. This was entered into the system to account for our monthly management fee between our parent entity and our US-1 entity. This is a simple example, but NetSuite's intercompany management is robust enough to handle whatever your intercompany needs might be, whether that's an intercompany journal entry, a buy and sell and transaction where you're transferring inventory, or where you might be moving employee costs for time and expense on various projects. NetSuite handles all of these intercompany transactions in the same way. Now let's go ahead and go back to our period close process and run our elimination intercompany transactions. When I execute this, NetSuite will find every single intercompany transaction for the month and automatically create a couple of elimination entries that are posted to my elimination subsidiaries. The first entry is for my balance sheet account and the second is for my P&L account. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the system created for that intercompany journal entry. You're able to see here that my $25,000 has been posted to that elimination sub, making my job more efficient. And just to take a look at this from a reporting perspective, let's go back to our income statement and we can now throw this out by subsidiary and see exactly where our intercompany management fee is hitting our elimination entity. The system's ensuring it has internal controls to prevent us from overstaying our revenue or expenses. Thank you for watching today's short video on NetSuite's multi-company functionality.